Kristen, and I'm on the worship and the media team here at Family Life. Here at Family Life, we believe in bringing those who are away from God into a living relationship with Jesus and growing believers into full maturity in Him. Our pastor has a great message for you today, so I invite you to come and worship together with us. I'm Pastor Esther, and I'm so glad you're with me today because you are going to grow a little closer to Jesus. You know what I know? Your problem is not permanent. My problem is not permanent. How do I know this? Because God is our deliverer. Let's say that together. My problem is not permanent. Psalms 50:15 says this, Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you will honor me. Say that right there at home. Read that out loud to yourself. And realize God will deliver you. God will be with you in your day of trouble. That's His promise to you and I. Psalms 107, 1 and 2 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. Our Father is a good God. He loves us, for His loving kindness is everlasting. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. 
whom he has redeemed from the hand of the adversary. Here, let's look at three things right here. God is good and he loves you. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What you say about your problem is so important. Let's say what God says about our problem. Instead of talking about the problem the way it is all the time, let's begin to see and find out what does God say about my problem? What has he promised me? And begin to say that. Say it over and over again until it gets down on the inside of you. And then he says he's redeemed us from the hand of the adversary. Who is that? The Bible says that our adversary, the devil, is roaring like a, a lion, looking who he may devour. See, the, our adversary, the enemy, does bring stuff into our lives that is so unexpected and things that do, don't work out sometimes and things that are not... Um, are, that are so troublesome, sometimes they do come from the enemy. But God says here, he has redeemed us from the hand of the enemy. Therefore, he says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you belong to Jesus, you've been redeemed. If you belong in the family of God, you've been redeemed. This pandemic, this lockdown is not permanent. That's good news for us. It's not going to stay like this forever. And, you know, it's getting to be wearing some. It's getting to be like, you know, we're home so much and we want to be together, but it's not going to last forever. But what we do meanwhile makes a difference in how we're going to handle our circumstances that are not so good. And, you know, our pain is not permanent. What else is not permanent? Our mistakes. Our mistakes don't have to be permanent. They don't have to define us. Our failures don't have to define us. These things are not permanent. These things can be changed if we allow God to deliver us, if we allow God to turn our pain into our victories, if we allow God to turn our mistakes into good things that we learn from and then we set our set uh, the bible says to set our hand to whatever we do and he will cause it to prosper he will cause us to succeed in it if we'll just give it to him and something that i think is so good for us to know is that the enemy doesn't fight us where we are he fights us from getting where we're going and a lot of times he tries to stop us he tries to put things in our way he tries to set things, traps in our lives so that it'll stop us from accomplishing what God wants us to accomplish, from fulfilling God's purpose in our lives. The things that are permanent are God's power on you, God's love in you, God's amazing deliverance for you. That is permanent. Something else that is permanent is you and I. We are permanent. God created us for eternity. God created us to last, to be in with him in eternity. He created heaven and hell to be eternal. He created his plans and purposes. Those things are permanent. What is not permanent is our problem. Our problem can change. And it's good for us to look at whatever it is that we're in right now that is troublesome. Whatever is in right we're in right now that that you know is just distressed to us or stressful to us to see that as not being permanent. Again, the enemy doesn't fight you where you are. He fights you from getting where you're going to. Uh, we read in Psalms 107 in all of these verses, it talks about these, the Israelites being lost, being homeless, hungry, thirsty. Uh, it even says in verse 10 that some sat in darkness and deepest gloom, imprisoned in iron chains of misery. You know what that says to me or describes to me is depression, gloominess darkness, imprisoned, 
What is imprisoning you today? What kind of thoughts? What kind of feelings? What kind of insecurities? What kind of false expectations are imprisoning you today? What kind of addictions are imprisoning you today? God wants to break those chains in your lives. In verse 14, it, well, it says that they cry out to God and he rescues them out of their distress. And in verse 14, it says that he led them from the darkness and deepest gloom. He snapped their chains. Are you ready for your chains to be snapped in your lives? Are you ready to see God as your deliverer? Are you ready to see that God will deliver you from your distress? Psalms 107, 6 says this, Lord, help, they cried in their trouble, and he rescued them from their distress. That word distress is extreme anxiety, sorrow, or pain. Do you feel that way today? Or have you ever felt that way? I know I have. There was a time a few years back when um, I felt like our church was in this very state right here. And I felt distressed about it. And I began to cry out to God to help us. Uh, there are some circumstances, several circumstances that were happening at that time that caused, um, caused me to feel like you know, family life needs to survive this because people need family life. Because I tell you, anybody that comes to family life, they grow in their relationship with Jesus. And uh, it was just such, so, under such attack and threat because of all these different circumstances that took place. We were in a building project that failed. My sister-in-law passed. We had a really good friend in the church. She passed. We had a great leader in the church that had got into some real personal problems. And we never talked about it to the church family, but be people began to sense things were not right. And I remember using these scriptures right here in Psalms 107 and waking up in the middle of the night just feeling the burden for our church, feeling the burden for the people that need family life because God's called us together to reach people and to make a difference in people's lives. God's called us together to be the church so that we can help others come to Jesus. And the, uh, the enemy doesn't like that. And so anyway, our church was kind of under this attack and I would walk, I would get up in the middle of the night and I would just walk the floor and I would begin to claim some of these same scriptures that we're talking about today. And in Psalms 107, we see several episodes of what they were going through. They were lost, homeless, hungry, thirsty. It says that they were sitting in darkness and deepest gloom. They were imprisoned in iron chains of misery. It goes on to say that they had even gone out on the ship and this great storm came and God rescues them from that. He calms the sea so that they could be safe, come safely to the harbor. It also says that they sowed their fields and planted their vineyards and harvested their bumper crops and how he blessed them. He be, he be, they began to experience and see God's great provision for them because they cried out to the Lord in their distress and he helped them. Well, I cried out to the Lord in my distress and God helped us. Here we are all these years later and we're still going strong. We're still helping people who are away from God come into a living relationship with Jesus. We're still actively involved helping people grow in Him and mature in Him because that is what's permanent. But our, my problem was not permanent. The things that we were facing at that time were not permanent. The pain that we were suffering was not permanent. The Lord came in 
and rescued us. The Lord came in and delivered us from our distress. And God will do the same thing for you. One of our really good friends, and I know that he's going to be okay with me sharing this story, um, but um, he was with us at Family Life. He recently got married and moved away to Arizona. Thank you, Charles, uh, for your great story. And um, he had experienced a very distressful, dark time in his life. He had really fallen into some deep, dark depression to the point he was afraid to go out the door. He was spending all his time in his bedroom and he called us up and reached out and asked for help. And we began to pray with him and claim the scriptures with him. And he did the very same thing that we just read about. He called out to the Lord in the, his, the day of his trouble and God delivered him. And yeah, he ended up coming back to church, coming back, getting involved. And now, like I said, he's moved to Arizona and he's married and he's, God has a great future for him. But he could have stayed in that darkness. He could have stayed in that dark room. You see, he took medicine for it and that helped to some degree. But what really got him out of that bedroom into living life again was claiming the scriptures, calling out to God. And just like we read, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I would encourage him, Charles, just keep on saying God's word over yourself. Keep saying what God has said about you. Keep saying that you are free from this depression. Keep saying that God has delivered you out of this darkness into his marvelous light. And he did that. And was it a fight? It was a huge fight. But he stuck with it and he did not give up. And the day came when he was able to walk out the door. The day came when he was able to drive down the street. The day came when he was able to come back to church. The day came when he was able to get back involved in ministry. The day came when he was ready to get married. You see, all of us face difficult situations, but our problem is not permanent. If we allow God to come and rescue us, uh, another word for that is that God came to rescue us, that God came to fully ransom us. Let's look at Psalms 111 verse 9. It says this, He has paid a full ransom for His people. He has guaranteed His covenant with them forever. What a holy, awe-inspiring name He has. Wow. What did he do for us? He paid the price for us to be rescued, delivered, healed, saved, redeemed, provided for. He bought our freedom for us. In Psalms 107 verse 20, it says that he sent his word and healed them, snatching them from the door of death. You know how many times I have claimed that scripture? for myself and for others, tons of times. Why? Because sickness and disease come to attack our bodies. And we, we can look up to God to rescue us. We can look up to God to deliver us out of our trouble. We can look up and say, I am redeemed from sickness and disease. The, again, let the redeemed of the Lord Say so. What are you saying about your problem? What are you saying about your situation? Are you saying what God is saying about you? Are you saying what God has said about you? It takes practice. It takes focus. It takes concentration to do this. I know several people that were given death sentences, gave, given weeks to live, months to live, and they did this very same thing. They began to cry out to God. 
they began to proclaim the scriptures of the Lord. They began to say what God said about them, and they lived and not died. And just like Psalms 107, 20 says, he sent his word and healed them, snatching them from the door of death. Wow, that is good news for us. It is good news to know that God paid full ransom for his people. That he has guaranteed his covenant with us forever. See, it's not temporary. This is permanent. His covenant with you and I is permanent. What a holy, awe-inspiring name he has. What is his name? Deliverer, rescuer, healer, savior, provider. He is the one who has brought freedom to us. In fact, Luke 4, 18, 19 says that Jesus opened up the scroll and began to say this about himself. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. Haven't we been saying this is our year of favor? The favor of God is upon you. The favor of God is upon me. Expect God's provision. Expect God's God to rescue you. Expect God to deliver you from your pain. Expect God to turn around your problem and make it something that is going to be a, a good thing in your life. You know, we can learn from our mistakes. We can learn from our problems. We can come out better and stronger out of our problems if we will allow ourselves to learn and to be all that God has called us to be. Don't let your problem consume you because they'll, they will try to. You know, anytime I get under uh, heaviness or stress or worry or fear about any kind of situation that's come my way, the temptation is to let that problem consume my heart, my mind, my soul. But instead, Consume your problems with the Word of God. And as I do that, I can find relief. I can find release. And I can start seeing my problem is not permanent. But God's promises to me, those are permanent. Those are lasting. I tell you, God's promise will get us out of any kind of problem that we face any out of any kind of trouble that we might face god's word will deliver us god is your deliverer god is my deliverer his promise again is to rescue me to deliver me to heal me to save me he's redeemed me let the redeemed of the lord say so what are you saying about your problem? What are you saying about yourself? Do you see yourself free? Do you see yourself forgiven? Do you see yourself accepted and loved by God? Do you see yourself as redeemed? Do you see yourself as provided for? And allowing yourself to see what God sees, sees for you. Mark 10, 27 says this, Jesus looked at them and said, it's possible for it's impossible for people to save themselves. No, I can't rescue myself. No, I can't deliver myself. It's impossible for people to save themselves, but it's not impossible for God to save them. Everything is possible for God. That is good news for you and I to know that with God all things are possible. God will use the things in the natural as well as his supernatural working power to deliver you. Pastor Annie and I were talking about this just the other day. We we're talking about how there's things that God has provided for us that are on this earth already to help us, to assist us, 
to come alongside us. But then that, working together with God's supernatural, divine power, the, to the, together they will deliver us. Together it will bring hope and a future for us. And um, we can expect God's favor working in the natural for us as well as bringing his divine power to work together for us to deliver us, to provide for us, to bring us out of that pr trouble or defeat that we're experiencing. You know, we can't wait until our problem is over before rising up from it. You see, these people that we read about in Psalms 107, they faced a whole lot of problems and trouble, but they cried out to the Lord and they began to praise God for the good things that God had done for them. They began to thank Him for the good things that God had already done for them. Why? Because that brought them courage, that brought them faith, that brought them reassurance that God was going to do it again. They remembered they were in covenant with God. They remembered they were the redeemed. They remembered who they were and who God was. And that's how they rose up out of these troubles. And as they cried out to the Lord, He delivered them from their distress. And God will do the very same thing for you. God will deliver you as you expect God to deliver you. You know, we can't, again, we need to rise up while we're still in the problem. We got to look up to God while things have not changed yet. While things are still remaining the same, we've got to look to God and cry out to Him and expect Him to deliver us. While the problem is still the same, we've got to start seeing ourselves free, seeing ourselves delivered. Like, like we read in Psalm, uh, Luke 4, 18 and 19, He sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that's healing, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. You see, it's already here. He's already done the work. So what do I want you to remember today? I want you to remember that your problem is not permanent. Number two, I want you to remember to say what God has said about your problem. Pastor Ray says, work with God to get through your storm. Instead of listening to yourself, talk to yourself. That's great advice. Again, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Number three, expect both the supernatural and the natural to work together in your favor. And then number four, keep praising God as though it's already been done for you. You know, believe that you're going to come out of this problem better and stronger. That you're going to come out of this with greater faith and trust in God. Believe that you're going to come out more on fire than for Jesus than ever before. More committed to Him than ever before. And expect good things in your future because God is a good God. Let's pray. Lord God, we just pray right now and we give you our distress. We give you our anxieties. We give you our sorrow. We give you our pain. We ask you, Lord God, deliver us. We cry out to you and we ask you, Lord, deliver us. And we expect, Lord God, that you are our deliverer. We expect you, Lord, to rescue us, to heal us, to redeem us to provide for us because that is who you are in our lives and right now friend if you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart you want to belong to him because he is the best thing that could ever happen to you so say this with me Lord Jesus come into my heart be my Lord and be my Savior I ask you to forgive me of all my sins and I thank you that you love me and that you give me eternal life. 
In Jesus' name, amen. I'm so glad you've listened today. Go and just expect God to deliver you and share your prayer requests with us. And we provide you with all the links to that. Share your requests with us because we want to pray for you for your specific need. And just know this, we're all the time praying for our church family. We love you and we expect good things in Jesus' name. Hi, I'm Isa, the tech coordinator here at Family Life. I'm so glad you were able to join us today. If you enjoyed what you heard today, go ahead and like and subscribe to us. You can also follow us on our Facebook and Instagram that are all provided below. If you would like to support us, there are three ways to give. You can text to give, or you can go to our website. There's also a giving by mail. Again, all three are provided on the screen for you. We also have a kids page that has really great activities for your kids. If you would like to check that out, that is also linked down below. Our life groups have just started and they're going really, really well. If you would like to sign up, you can go ahead and click on the link below. Thank you so much again for joining us and we'll see you next week. Thank you.